Okay. Sir, calcium is a vital mineral that plays a crucial role in a proper muscle function and nerve muscle conduction and blood clotting. Role of calcium in anesthesia, number one is the calcium homeostasis. Calcium mm -hmm. plays a crucial role in maintaining normal physiological functions, including neuromuscular transmission and cardiovascular regulation, with essential, which is essential during anesthesia. Second point is the neuromuscular function. Calcium is involved in release of acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction, enabling muscle, muscle contraction and respiration, which must be carefully monitored and regulated during anesthesia. The third point is the cardiovascular effect. Calcium regulates the cardiac muscle contractility and vascular tone, influencing blood pressure and cardiac output. Factors that anesthesiologists must be carefully managed throughout the procedure. Calcium homeostasis and anesthesia. Now, calcium regulation. Calcium levels in the body are tightly regulated by hormones like parathyroid hormone and the calcitonin. This delicate balance can be disrupted by anesthetic agents which can affect calcium homeostasis. Electrolyte balance. <coughs> Anesthesia can cause electrolyte imbalance, including changes in calcium levels. This can lead to complications like cardiac arrhythmias, neuromuscular dysfunction, and altered drug pharmacokinetics. Calcium dependent process. Many essential physiological processes are dependent on proper calcium regulation, including nerve impulse transmission, muscle contraction, blood clotting. Disruption of calcium homeostasis during anesthesia can have widespread effects. Now, regulation, calcium regulation during anesthesia. Calcium homeostasis. Anesthesia can disrupt body's delicate calcium homeostasis affected, affecting everything from neuromuscular function to cardiovascular stability. Calcium regulation mechanism. The body uses regulatory mechanisms like parathyroid hormones, vitamin D3, to maintain calcium levels during anesthesia. Calcium monitoring of calcium levels. Close monitoring of ionized calcium levels is crucial during anesthesia to detect and correct any imbalances. Calcium and neuromuscular function. Calcium plays a crucial role in the proper functioning of the neuromuscular system. It is essential for the release of acetylcholine and neuromuscular neurotransmitter that triggers muscle contraction. Disruption in the calcium homeostasis can lead to the neuromuscular disorder and impacts the responses in the anesthetic management. Anesthetic agents uh, in response impact that responses to anesthetic agents. Monitoring and maintaining calcium levels during anesthesia is important to ensure optimal neuromuscular function and prevent complications such as muscle weakness, respiratory depression, and prolonged recovery times. Calcium and cardiovascular effects. Number one is blood pressure regulation. Calcium plays a crucial role in regulating blood pressure by monitoring the contractility of the vascular smooth muscle. Cardiac contractility. Second point. Calcium influx into the cardiac muscle cells is essential for triggering the contraction of the heart and ensuring efficient pumping of the blood. Third point is the arrhythmia prevention. Calcium homeostasis is vital for monitoring normal heart rhythms and disruption, which can lead to various cardiac arrhythmias. Now, calcium and anesthetic pharmacokinetics. Absorption. Calcium can affect the absorption and disruption, uh, distribution of anesthetic drugs, including their onset and duration of action. Metabolism. Calcium regulates the drug metabolism enzymes, potentially altering the pharmacokinetics and anesthetics that undergoes hepatic metabolism. Excretion. Calcium status can affect the renal excretion of certain anesthetic agents requires, requiring dose adjustments to maintain therapeutic levels. Calcium supplementation in anesthesia. Calcium supplementation may be necessary during anesthesia to maintain proper calcium homeostasis and prevent complications. Factors like hemodilution, blood product administration and drug interactions can disrupt calcium imbalance. Monitoring calcium levels and providing targeted calcium replacement can help to ensure proper neuromuscular transmission, cardiovascular stability, and dark pharmacokinetics during anesthetic procedures. These are mainly done by uh, trans, trans, uh, transfusing calcium gluconate and calcium chloride. But uh, most commonly, calcium gluconate is administered as calcium uh, chloride, which is very uh, irritant to the great vessel, which is very irritant to the vessels. So mainly. Uh, central line is used for uh, uh, transfusing calcium uh, gluconate and chloride. Monitoring calcium levels during anesthesia. Importance of monitoring. Calcium plays a crucial role in various physiological processes, including neuromuscular function and cardiovascular monitoring. So, monitoring calcium levels during anesthesia is essential to ensure patient safety and prevent complications. Measurement methods. Calcium levels can be measured through laboratory tests such as ionized calcium or total calcium assays. Real-time monitoring using non-selective electrodes 
may be used, may be uh, also employed to detect calcium fluctuations during anesthetic procedures. Calcium man management studies, this including monitoring, continuous monitoring of serum calcium levels. Supplementation is calcium supplementation as and when needed in the form of IV calcium gluconate or LCM, uh, IV calcium chloride. Adjustments is triturating the anesthetic agents of uh, agents to maintain calcium homeostasis. Effective calcium management during anesthesia involves multi-pronged uh, approach. This includes continuous monitoring of serum calcium levels, provides calcium supplementation as needed and carefully adjusting anesthetic agents to maintain calcium homeostasis. By, protectively, by proactively managing calcium balance, anesthesia providers can mitigate the risk of complications and ensure optimal patient outcomes. So that's all uh, for calcium. Okay. Uh, I think you have to modify your answer. There are a lot of repetition of the same point, like a neuromuscular junction. You uh, get twice that uh, calcium is necessary for release of the cell volume. Okay. So sir. what you can do is when this question is uh, has been repeatedly asked several times in the DNB theory. So you have to first describe all about the physiology of calcium. Then uh, in your answer, there is no mention about hyper or hypocalcemia status at all, which also we come across, which is part of a pathological status. And then okay, there are some uh, special situations where calcium plays a very important role. So like that, you can divide them into three components. I'll just share my PPT.